this is me. This is my brother, Radu, and this is his son and my 15-year-old nephew, Andy. The three of us are about to embark on a journey from the sunny coast of the south of France to Paris, to London, and finally to Bristol. But this isn't just any road trip. We're on a mission to change the way the world thinks about life inside corporate buildings, seeing them as living organisms, where creative engineers battle hidden enemies like low indoor air quality and energy waste. Meet Andy. He's 15, and he's about to do something that usually takes a team of highly trained engineers twice the amount of time. Install 50 air quality and power metering sensors in just one day. No wires, no complicated tools, just Inon's revolutionary link edge technology and a teenager. On this journey, we'll discover how air quality, temperature, humidity, and CO2 levels silently impact our productivity and well being every single day, and how energy waste can be eliminated if properly monitored. Together, we'll prove that improving the way we work doesn't need to be complicated. It can be now as simple as this. Can a 15-year-old change the future of corporate life? Let's find out. The trip started with me flying to the south of France, where my brother, Radu, lives with his wife, Turkian, and their three kids. At first glance, Radu and Turkian seem like regular people. What isn't obvious is that they've built something extraordinary. They created Inon, the company that makes buildings be ready for anything. Now, it's Andy's turn to learn from his parents. Good morning. Andy is a normal teenager. He starts his mornings by sending snaps to his friends. He deals with pimples, wears braces, does his homework, hangs out with his friends, and is intentional about his fashion choices. But what makes him different than any other teenager is that Andy speaks three languages. He was born in the UK and I was on the other side of the room. Grew up in France and his parents are Romanian. He's also the oldest of three siblings, which means he feels a lot of responsibility. But what really makes him stand out is his ambition. He wants to prove himself that he can do something hard, something so challenging that no teenager has ever done it before. With our bags packed and a good night of sleep behind us, we set off for our first destination, Paris. During the drive, Radu had an idea. So outside is really cold, right? It's one degree outside, freezing. And in here, everybody tells you to recirculate the air in the car to save petrol, so the car consumes less. Mm -hmm. Why it consumes less is because if you just recirculate the air in the car, you don't need to bring air from outside to heat it. More economical, we're yeah. saving the planet. Yeah. Now, what I don't know, because I've never done the test, is at which point the level of CO2 becomes so high that I'm going to fall asleep behind the wheel. We decided to do a little experiment using an air quality sensor that Inon distributes, similar to the ones that Andy will have to install later this week. So we're starting from a healthy 674. So how much time is going to take until this value is going to affect my ability to drive? Let's see how we go. Numbers around 500 are ideal. Under 1000 are still good. But when the CO2 level is over 1,500, your ability to focus and even stay awake will be massively reduced. Now it's, it's gone up from 600 to 1,045. In, in exactly of, three minutes. In span of three minutes. <laughs> so it's been another, what, three, three minutes? minutes yeah. The windows are starting to get a bit misty. Tinted. <laughs> so we may have to stop the experiment at the point that I can't see the road. 1,800. I think this is Should we conclude the experiment? <laughs> Should I switch on yes, it? I think, I think, think it's already. <laughs> the quality of the air we breathe is more important than we might think. Not even while driving, but in the buildings where we sleep, work, and live. Eventually, we made it safely to Paris. Even in an old restaurant in Paris, technology is silently working behind the scenes. We notice temperature sensors making sure the air inside feels just right. Where are we going, Andy? Yes. Next morning, while Radu was busy with business meetings in Paris, Andy and I went to the Louvre Museum. First impressions. What do you think, Andy? Breathe. 
We did a little experiment. We checked the CO2 levels near the Mona Lisa. So we have officially made it to the Mona Lisa. Right now it's at 1,200. And compared them to a less famous painting. So let's take for example this painting. No one really seems to care about it. Let's wait a bit and see how much the CO2 level is already is going down. The difference was shocking. We were amazed at how smoothly the museum's air quality sensors worked without anyone noticing. I think we might have found it. There's like little holes over there and they seem to be pumping air in the room. But you don't even notice them, they like blend in with the atmosphere. The way the technology was hidden was impressive. Discretion was key compared to the traditional air filtration systems where size and noise are often unavoidable. Andy never thought much about air, until now. Traveling through Paris and London, he's starting to see buildings differently. He always assumed what mattered most were things like furniture, lighting, or even easy access to water. But now he understands. It's something much less obvious. The air we breathe. If the air in a mall is too dry, too cold, or makes people feel drowsy, they leave. The same goes for hotels, restaurants, schools, and offices. Since people spend most of their lives indoors, air quality isn't just a luxury, it's essential. Harvard research shows that better indoor air boosts productivity. Workers in well-ventilated offices perform cognitive tasks up to 100% better, and an 8% productivity increase was linked to cleaner air, saving businesses thousands per employee. And for those running large buildings, wasted energy isn't just bad for the planet, it's expensive. Andy is beginning to understand the weight of what he's about to do. In just a week, he'll take everything he's learned and put it to the test. For the first time, real responsibility is in his hands. And he is ready. After Paris, we passed through London and finally arrived in Bristol, where Andy met part of the Enon team. Good morning. Hi, nice to meet you. It was Andy's first day on the job and Lewis gave him something essential. It was his first real step toward becoming an engineer. Looking around the office, what is this? I find this quite intimidating. Yeah. What do you What do you think? It's confusing. It's like that scene in the movies, you know, when they're trying to break the code at the end. Yeah, and they have like a little map. Yes, exactly. This is the part of the story where Andy is thinking, "What did I get myself into?" So Andy. 15, he's not qualified to work on electrics. So we had to prepare for him a small enclosure for him just to do the softer part of the project. I'm going to guide him step by step on every component of how it works and what he needs to do to, to get it going. This is the main control unit. But this, is this is the wireless control. Together with Radu, he went through all the and technical all of lessons. That, he stayed patient. He saw all the different types of sensors that he would need to install. By the end of the first day, Andy had learned how to set up each mile site sensor and how to connect them to the Enon cloud using the Link Edge gateway. At some point, Andy said, Guys, let's finish everything today <laughs> so we can have some time tomorrow. It's better to push through. The level of dedication, Andy, quite, locked in. <laughs> was quite impressive. He set up each mile site sensor using the NFC app. He used four types of LoRaWAN sensors. The AM102 temperature and humidity sensor. The AM103 temperature, humidity and CO2 sensor. The GS301 bathroom odor detector and the CT101 self-powered energy metering sensor. He also added stickers with the client's logo on each sensor. Setting up one sensor wasn't too hard, but doing 50 in one day, that's a whole different challenge. Still, Andy pushed through. By the end of his training, he packed all the sensors into a box, ready to be installed at the client's building. Bye everybody, see you soon! Bye the big day finally arrived. Wait, wait a minute. Andy didn't sleep well the night before. And I was on the other side of the room. I was on the other side of the room. 
but he put on his new t-shirt and he was ready to go. In his mind, he pictured everything going smoothly. He'll walk through the main doors. Snap the sensors onto the walls. And get the credit he deserves. But reality was a little different. We were in a formal meeting room. Radu was explaining the technical process of installing and calibrating the sensors to the engineers. We develop our own app on top of it, and then that talks to the UG65. If if this will be my organization, you have to configure two things. You have to go to the UG65 and set up all the sensors, and then you have to go in the J's and it's going to try and have a go. But it shouldn't be too hard, it should be anything except too hard. Okay. After distributing the sensors throughout the building using the floor plans, Andy was ready to start installing them. Where's the box? But then, everything took a turn for the worse. What box? The box we brought in this morning. Is it not here? The box with all the sensors had vanished into thin air. The only logical explanation is someone didn't know what it was for. We didn't tell them we brought the box and they took it. There were boxes all over the place. Anyone could have taken it. After all his hard work, was it all going to fall apart? He asked the round. Excuse me guys, did you see like a box full of like devices? But no one had seen it. Just as panic started <laughs> creeping in, Have you guys seen a box? Box. <laughs> he asked someone who seemed to know, and they did. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yes, I was. It was our box. Hey, bro, how? You right? Cool. <laughs> Relieved but short on time, Andy had to work fast. Using everything he learned from Radu, he installed all the sensors. And just five minutes before 4 p.m., as people began heading out, he installed the final sensor. Andy had done it. He became the first person ever to install 50 sensors in one day. As we packed up and left the building, there was a quiet moment where everything sank in. What Andy did wasn't just impressive because he installed 50 sensors in a single day. It was impressive because of what it represented. Ambition, courage, and the determination to take on a challenge that most people would shy away from. These weren't just sensors on the walls. They were part of something groundbreaking. The technology that Enon develops isn't just about controlling air quality and energy management. It's about shaping the future, helping creative engineers make the spaces where we live, work, and grow healthier, smarter, and more efficient. Buildings ready for anything. It's technology that works silently in the background, yet it impacts people's lives in ways they don't even realize by fighting invisible enemies. Better energy use means helping the environment and increasing business efficiency. Better air means better focus, better health, and ultimately, a better life. As I watched Andy exhausted but proud, I couldn't help but think about his father, Radu, at the same age, 15 years old, with the same spark in his eyes, the same haircut, the same drive to prove himself. It was like looking at a reflection across time. Back then, Radu had the same ambition that Andy has now. And just like Andy, he probably had moments of doubt, moments where things didn't go as planned. But it was that determination, the refusal to give up, that brought Radu to where he is today, leading a company that's redefining technology, productivity, and the air we breathe, turning buildings into smart, adaptable spaces ready for anything. Andy's story is more than just a school project. It's a reminder that great things start small, 
with a kid, a screwdriver, and the dream to do something that matters. And sometimes, the biggest achievements aren't about breaking records. They're about breaking limits. The ones we think we have and the ones the world puts in front of us. And this is just the beginning.